Welcome, I'm Rob Froney and I'm here to tell you about hysteresis oscillators. Hysteresis oscillator made up of two circuits. These are uh, op-amp circuits. The first one is an integrator and the second one is called a Schmidt trigger, sometimes called a comparator with hysteresis. And the comparator with hysteresis is a, a, a modified comparator, so we'll need to look at all three of those circuits to understand what's going on. First of all, let's look at the integrator circuit. <coughs> the integrator circuit is shown here. It's an op-amp with a capacitor in the feedback path and a resistor um, on the input. Uh, and This is uh, going into the inverting terminal. The uh, non-inverting terminal is grounded. So because there's negative feedback, uh, we can say we have zero volts on the inverting terminal because there's zero volts on the uh, non-inverting terminal of the op-amp. That's by using the uh, summing point constraint. So what we want to do is write a node equation at the inverting terminal of the op-amp. So there's two currents going in. The first one on the left through the uh, resistor is VI over R. And the one on the top through the capacitor is, is C times the derivative of the voltage at the output node minus the voltage at the zero node or the inverting node and uh, the, the derivative of those things with respect to T. So we write those out. C dV dT plus VI over R equals zero. So then you can solve that for dV out dT and that equals minus one over RC times the uh, VI. And that's the one, uh, the uh, you know, relationship we're going to use. If you go on down and, and uh, solve this, you'll see V out of T is the initial voltage on the capacitor, uh, or my, uh, yeah, it's the initial voltage on the capacitor plus uh, minus one over RC times the integral of Vn. So this is called an integrator circuit. Let's look at the comparator next. A comparator is essentially uh, an analog. Uh, um, if statement. It says if uh, V plus is greater than V minus, let the output go to uh, VCC. If V uh, plus is less than V minus, let it go to VEE. VCC and VEE are the power supply uh, um, voltages for the op amp. If we wanted this to work on a, uh, a standard logic circuit that maybe went from 0 to 5 volts, we might have VEE at 0 and uh, we might have uh, VCC at 5 volts. So normally uh, VEE is like less than zero and uh, VCC is greater than zero. But, uh, you know, uh, it could be uh, that uh, they're both positive or both negative. So uh, maybe I should uh, make a note of that here and uh, just say less than or equal to zero. So here is the input output diagram over here. If you look at the this uh, um, graph here, you see the input-output diagram. Essentially, uh, it's this way because the, the op-amp has an enormous gain. So if V plus is any bit bigger than V minus, you know, it's going to be jump up with an enormous slope there, you know, 10 to the 8th. And when you're looking at things, uh, you know, on the scale that we care about, that uh, enormous slope, which actually uh, doesn't go straight up, is so straight up we can't really tell. So let's uh, now look at a, a comparator with hysteresis. This is the same circuit that we just had, except now we've added some positive feedback to the circuit here. So notice that uh, we have uh, a, a feedback resistor RF and an input resistor RI, and uh, we've got uh, we've got those two guys uh, connected so that the RF is the feedback resistor and RI is the input resistor. So let's see what happens here. It's really um, all about when it, when it changes. In other words, uh, this is the line here when it changes, when VEE was negative, and, uh, and uh, we're trying to make VN more and more positive. VN is on, on this axis right here. This is VN. And, and this axis up here is V out. So if, as we increase VN, then um, eventually Vn overpowers Vcc. See, they're kind of arguing about the voltage at this uh, um, positive terminal of the op amp. You see, yeah, suppose Vcc starts out at uh, negative uh, Vee, you know, this Vee voltage down here, negative a number. 
and um, uh, then uh, you know if if vi is also negative you're over here in the this region somewhere and there's no disagreement everybody's happy and the output stays low however if you increase v in here and make it bigger and bigger positive there gets to be a place where vn is more powerful than v out and it changes the you know it raises this voltage v plus up so it's just a tiny bit bigger than zero and then boom it jumps up here and if you kept increasing um, v in it would just go over here to the right on on this way right here so uh, you know you could uh, you could just say uh, this is like uh, you know, going either way here, uh, you could have this going uh, in that direction too. Similarly, you could have it going down here in this direction if you wanted. So, what we have here is uh, a thing that uh, doesn't change immediately. This is like your thermostat. Uh, essentially, we do this on the thermostat so that um, it doesn't wear out the relay that turns on the furnace and turns off the furnace. You see, if we had a regular comparator to turn on and off our furnace, what would happen is uh, it would be set so that it switches at 68 degrees here. And when it switches at 68 degrees, the heater comes on and immediately, um, or the heater goes off and immediately um, it goes back down over here. And, and then, uh, you know, the heater gets turned back on again and just goes on, off, on, off, on, off. And, and that's very annoying uh, to uh, people in the room. And it's also uh, really hard on your relay. So what we do is we have it so that it, um, it turns on, at, um, it turns the furnace on at like uh, um, 66 and it turns it off at 72. And then, you know, uh, the room cools, da cools down those gl gradually. When it gets down to 66, uh, then, uh, you know, it turns on again. And, uh, you know, then it waits until it gets up to 72, and then it turns off again. That's called hysteresis. That's what we have going on in this, this circuit right here and uh, this uh, diagram right here. Okay, so uh, now that we have those two basic building blocks, let's actually build ourselves a hysteresis oscillator so maybe the thing to do here is to look and see if we can understand how this circuit works and first of all what it is on this side we have a, com a comparator with hysteresis or also known as a Schmidt trigger and on this side we have an integrator and this integrator if you remember it actually turns things upside down when it integrates you, you remember this uh, minus 1 over RC times uh, Vn there so, <clears throat> what happens here is, is this. Let's just look at our, our, our diagram here. Suppose V in, or V out of the, the square wave, that's this voltage right here. This is a V S, whoops, uh, undo. I wanted to get rid of that. I want to call this, this is um, V S Q. And um, this voltage over here is VTR, the triangle wave. So suppose the square wave was 10 volts here. If it's 10 volts, this thing starts integrating down. The uh, integrator here uh, starts integrating down. Right here, this starts integrating down. And this voltage starts dropping. You can see that happening right here on the graph. And so now the, uh, you know, once you get over here in the negative region, uh, the triangle wave right here is fighting with the square wave about what this voltage will be. When this voltage here gets to zero volts, it's going to switch. So in, in my diagram here, what happened is it switched when I got down here at minus five volts. So when it switches, the ten, 10 volts turns into VEE, which I'm saying is minus 10 volts. And now when it turns minus 10, then it starts integrating, the integrator starts integrating back up. It starts out an initial voltage right here of minus 5 and it goes up with the slope which is uh, minus 1 over RC times uh, the square wave and uh, it gets up here finally to plus 5 and and then it overpowers the output of the uh, Schmidt trigger and it changes again and so you end up with a red square wave and on the other end output you end up with a blue uh, triangle wave. Let's try and understand um, mathematically how we would set the frequency. Suppose we wanted a frequency of 10 kilohertz. 
Well, 10 kilohertz means this is 100 microseconds here. So we got T in microseconds here. That's 100 microseconds. This is one period, you know, one up-down thing, and then it repeats itself again. That means this is 50 microseconds, halfway between, uh, you know, 0 and 100 microseconds. So if you look at here, we can say that the, the dV triangle dt is 5 minus a minus 5, and it's going down, so it's negative that, so that's really like minus 10, and divided by the time that it took to uh, get down that far, and that was 50 microseconds. So I could say minus 10 over 50 microseconds, that's this thing right here, is the slope. And from my, um, from my uh, start equation up here, that's this one right here, or just rewriting the node equation again, like I did here, right there, and solving for dv triangle dt, I can say, okay, I want dv triangle dt to be this value right here. And what is that? Well, dv triangle dt is minus 1 over r3c1 times v square. Well, v square was um, 10 volts, and r3c1, we don't know what they are, but we're trying to find them. And we know that has to equal this number here, which turns out to be 0.2, or minus 0.2 volts per microsecond. And this right here is 10 volts per RC, has, uh, has units of uh, seconds. So um, you can use the, this equals that to solve for the RC product, and you get uh, 50 microseconds. So that's how you get the, uh, you know, the value for RC. You can pick the, uh, the R here, that would be R3. Or you could pick the C1 and solve for R3. Now let's look at what happens. Um, what happens? How do we make it so it switches right here at 5 volts and um, and at minus 5 volts? So if we look at here is the hysteresis diagram for this. So uh, this uh, voltage uh, right uh, let's see right here. This is um, uh, 5 volts. So this is uh, 5 volts right here. Um, let's make that green. And, uh, you know, this is um, 10 volts down here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this little point right here. Um, this guy right here, and I'm going to uh, say uh, that's when the switching occurs. Well, when does the switching occur? Well, it occurs when V plus was zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a node equation at the input uh, right here of the uh, of the um, of the Schmidt trigger. So what is that? Well, that's V triangle minus zero, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at, or minus v, uh, v plus, I guess. We'll just do V a triangle minus V plus over R1 plus V square minus V plus over R2. And at the specific point, it switches. At the specific point, it switches. V square is minus 10. That's this guy, minus 10. That should be a minus 10 right there, because it's down on the bottom. And, um, and uh, V triangle is plus 5. So essentially we're saying we're right at this point right here, uh, right here. So um, I said it switches when V plus is zero, so I've got five for V triangle minus zero plus V square, which was minus 10, minus V plus, which was zero. And each of these guys is divided by the resistors because we wrote the node equation there. And then you can just do algebra on that, and you'll find out that the ratio between R2 and R1 must be 2. So that's how you get that. You can pick R1 and uh, solve for R2, or however you like to do that. Just, it, it works just as long as the ratio is um, 2. Hopefully this was helpful. If not, um, uh, give me a call on Teams. <laughs>